you. Happy Thursday. I don't know if you saw my little um my little broadcast earlier. I was just testing out the system because I'm on a new feed uh today because we have some special uh things that we're going to be doing. So, I hope you are seeing me. I hope you are coming in. Good morning, Akila Johnson. Um we wanted to make sure we were in the right place on the right page. Good morning, Scooby Beckett. Good morning from Malaysia. Good morning. Good morning, Bonita McCulley. Good morning, Brandy Davis. Good morning, San Antonio. Yeah, I want to know where you're at. Good morning, Alexandria. Good morning. Who is this? Winston-Salem. Yes, Cleveland. Good morning, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Wow, I haven't heard from you, Pittsburgh. Good morning, bed -Stuy. Do or die, bed -Stuy. Yeah, you know, we got to be here. Good morning to you. We just wanted to get our technical stuff straightened out because, you know, me and the tech, we don't do well together. Good morning from California. Oh, you up early. Co-op City in Bronx, the boogie down Bronx. Houston, good morning. Good morning, Arizona. Jacksonville, Florida. Please say hello to Dr. Naeem Akbar for me. New Jersey, good morning. South Carolina, Chi Town, Ennis, Texas, Columbia. I think that's Kenya. Good morning, Kenya and Kansas and Raleigh. Okay, Daytona Beach and every Canada, Vancouver. Good morning. Is it still cold up there in Vancouver? Because it's always cold. Grand Rising, Nebraska, LaGrange, Georgia. Eagle Rock, California. Where is that? Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see everybody is, is coming in. So as usual, I want to say great and grand rising and welcome to this sacred space, this global connection and your daily antiviral message, living beyond the virus. This is full moon Thursday and it is day 20. Three. So I want to welcome all the cities. I want to welcome you, Atlanta, Cincinnati, uh, the Bronx, Los Angeles, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky. Ooh, that's where the big federal prison is. Uh huh. Longmont, Colorado, North Carolina. It's snowing in Ohio. Ooh, snowing. That's horrifying. Why is it snowing? And it's almost May. Mm -mm. New Orleans, NOLA, big prayers for you, NOLA. We're holding you tight, okay? Uh, Connecticut, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Dallas, we're holding you tight this morning. So I want to say good morning to everybody and welcome. So, so, so glad that we're together on day 23. Can you imagine? I want to welcome all my from the ground up graduates. I know you're out there. I want to welcome all the Wonder Woman weekend graduates. I want to welcome all the Omega Rites of Passage sister women. I want to welcome all of my InterVisions Institute, IVISD ministers and coaches and graduates and faculty. I want to welcome all the members of my Ile, Ile Omimeji. And if you are new to this gathering, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Wherever you live, wherever you're located, you are welcome here. And please, everyone, please join me in thanking my team. Miss Kirsten, Miss Marie, Miss Justine, Miss Angie, Miss June. Uh, Miss Ife, Mr. Julian, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Vernon, and Mr. Jeremy. That's my team. These are the folks that work behind the scenes so that everything runs smoothly. And I want to thank them. Yeah. And I want to thank you because we come here together. We gather here together each morning to receive an inspirational reading, an affirmation, maybe a few health tips, something for the children and something for the big people. We gather here together to connect to share and to heal. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to connect with people from around the globe. And I'm so grateful for this time, this moment in time that we can hold hands virtually. And I'm so grateful that we're able to connect heart to heart, men and women and children of all races and ages who I might not otherwise ever be connected to. And even though I can't see you, I can feel you and we can feel each other. And so let's just welcome and receive each other. 
And you know, because this is a full moon time, the divine feminine time. I, I think of the sacred feminine, the black Madonna, the, the goddess, the mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Yemaya, all of the sacred feminine energies. And I was reading a message um, that someone channeled or brought forth in consciousness and they sent it to me. And this is what it says, listen, you are destined to walk on this beautiful planet as a glorious, masterful being of light with total dominion over the sacred powers of God, which are in you. Remember these words, my dear, when the darkness comes to your doorstep with the intention to remove your inner understanding of the truth of who you are, I am here to warn you so that you will Prepare yourself in the perfect way. The whole universe knows that at the moment we forget who we really are, we are destined to become on the road to the long way of sorrow, manipulation, and slavery starts to open itself in your life. Remembrance, my child, is the only key, is the only solution to the great misfortunes that are able to destroy your being and your whole life and make you hopeless, lonely, and powerful. I'm here to remind you of who you truly are. I truly believe that we gather here each morning. I believe, that's not what the reading is saying, that's what I'm saying. Let me get my technology together. I truly believe that we do gather here each morning to remember who we are, yeah? To remember and to celebrate and to honor who we are. And, and if you don't gather with us, excuse my arm, y'all know me by now, I'm just clumsy. <laughs> and if you don't gather with us live in the morning, if you catch this replay throughout the day, as a, I believe it's a function of all of our deep desire to know and to remember who we really are, beings of life filled with the creator's presence or spirit, with total dominion over the sacred powers of the creator, which are in each one of us. And so we begin. <sighs> okay, let us take a deep breath. Long, deep inhale through the nose and a slow, complete exhale through the nose. Conscious breathing has a powerful effect on the mind, the body, and the spirit. Breath lessen, lessens stress. Breath helps to ease depression. Breath improves your sleep patterns, and breath influences your overall raw well-being. I can never say that word. I always say overall. <laughs> your overall well-being. And breath reminds us of our connection to the great spirit, to the creator. So together, let us breathe. Long, deep inhale through the nose. Slow, complete exhale through the nose. And as we breathe together, let us set an intention to defy anything and everything that would challenge our right and capacity to breathe fully. Long, deep inhale, slow, complete exhale. Remember, we are standing in the fullness of the truth of who we are, and that begins with breath. And we refuse to give up our capacity, our right to breathe, the freedom of breath, and we breathe. Today, let us send light and love and healing energy to the animal kingdom, okay? The dogs, the cats, the birds, the whales, the bears, the elephants, the eagles, all of the endangered species. Let us remember that some animals have lost their owners to the virus. We don't know how they will respond. They, they can't talk, they can't ask questions. We do know, however, that their lives have been altered. The lives of so many in the animal kingdom 
have been threatened, altered, and even ended at the hands of humans. So let us send light to all of the animal kingdoms today because we are all connected through our hearts and we are powerful. So let's call forth the violet transmuting flame, a universal healing energy to neutralize and transmute any energy of fear or violence or hurt or harm or danger to the four-leggeds, the swimming ones, the winged ones all over the planet. They've been good friends to us. They have sacrificed themselves so that we could have food and clothing and often just for our sport. So today we send them loves because we wanna see all things differently, remember? We wanna see things differently and we breathe. Join me in placing your hand over your heart and repeat these words silently or aloud with the intention that all of the animal kingdoms will be surrounded with our love and our appreciation that they will feel and receive loving kindness and respect. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be free from all threat and harm. Yeah, and we breathe. Our inspirational reading today comes from a classic spiritual work. It was written in 1942 and reissued in 1961. It's called Spiritual Unfoldment, Volume One by White Eagle. Spiritual Unfoldment, how to discover the invisible world and find the source of healing. And I'm reading from Personal and Divine Love, okay? This is what it says. The foundation of all spiritual growth is love. We all like to be loved. It is natural and makes life joyous and comfortable. Many of us, however, do not understand love unless we see it manifesting through a human personality. But sometimes the affection or the emotion called love is centered largely upon one person. Is this good? Well, only so far as the personality is recognized as a window through which true love shines. You see, to find the root of love, we must reach beyond all personality and recognize the quality of love that is universal. When we touch the true place of love, there is no separation. There is no question of separating any individual from another because we are all children of the same source. This will be difficult for you who argue that in human life, you must center your love upon individuals, that your best love must be reserved for husbands, wives, children, parents, friends, sweethearts, etc. In every individual soul, there dwells the divine life, that life which you all have in common. And it is that which enables you to feel and experience the emotion of love. Therefore, to know the meaning of love, you must seek to find the divine spark in everyone and not make the mistake of limiting your love and loving to one individual who you so readily discard the moment you believe they are making you unhappy. <laughs> Need you stay in a relationship where you are unhappy, abused, neglected, or harmed? Absolutely not. But it would be wise for you to learn how to leave with love rather than fighting your way out, only to hold the next person responsible for the love you believe you were denied. <laughs> in your world. <laughs> Spiritual Unfoldment One by White Eagle. Okay, I love that. It would be wise for you to learn how to leave with love rather than fighting your way out, 
only to hold the next person responsible for the love you believe you have been denied. Mm, mm, mm. Remember, everyone has a divine spark of love in their soul that we must learn to see. Unfortunately, some of those sparks are barely lit and dimly glowing. <laughs> but even then, those souls have come to teach you something about love, okay? Consider this affirmation and repeat it as often as possible throughout the day. I am the love God created. Love holds no grievances. I rest in the love of God. I am love. <laughs> and we breathe. <sighs> Welcome to Tradition Talks Thursday, okay? You know, today is Good Friday, a high holy day in the Christian tradition. And I believe today is also the beginning of Passover, a high holy day in the tradition of Judaism. And in both religious traditions, there are ceremonies, rites, and practices that people of these faith and cultures hold dear. Now, I am a firm believer that without culture, people are lost. And when I say culture, I mean music and art and language and the spiritual practices and teachings, the history of a people as it unfolds over time. Because with culture, there is tradition, the customs or beliefs that are passed down from one generation to another. And these customs will change and evolve with time. However, within the context of culture, we also find the ancient wisdom of the people. We find the constructs of character. We find the community expectations and we find the heart of the soul. Now, many of you know that I am of native heritage. My grandmother, my father's mother was born on the reservation in South Carolina. But unfortunately, as a native woman who left her land very early, she was raised to hide her culture to be ashamed of her people and to deny her traditions. But when no one was looking, she taught my brother and I many things about native culture and history. She just called it something else. <laughs> and I remember as a little girl, my elders called me a bridge. They said that I would be a bridge for many to walk across and join hands. And I never really understood what that meant until I was much older. And when I was in my 20s, I was reacquainted with my history and ancestry as a native African American woman. And while it was challenging at that time, I'll be the first to say that it saved my life. But more important than saving my life, it saved my mind. So today, I want to share some of that culture and tradition with you through our guest. We have a guest today. He is my brother. He is my teacher. He is my friend. And I, I just don't even know what to say. He, he put me up on the hill when I was, um, in a really bad way so that I could find my purpose and my vision. He gave me my pipe. And when my daughter Jamia was ill, he came across the country to do ceremony for her. His name is Warfield Moose. He is a Lakota teacher, healer, medicine man. And I'm humbled and honored to have him in our presence today. Oh, my brother. Can you hear me, Warfield? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Matakwe are seen to you. Oh, yes. Good morning. And here in the Washington, saying good morning to all the listeners and all the helpers and followers and all the people who support um, this, this day. And so I just say thank you for inviting me. So in our tradition, Warfield, I'm going to ask you to start off this morning with a prayer song, because, you know, we don't do nothing without song. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll start out with this. 
and I'll explain where, where the sound kind of came from. And um, before I even start, uh, I want to just greet again um, my my people on the Pioneer Dream. Um, there, uh, you know, a lot of things happening as you oh. know what's going on. But I think that there and songs, I think that they're holding up fine and continue on each day. Um, really proud of my, my people, my uh, culture. So I'm really, really thankful that uh, we have an opportunity to to be here again. So I want to um, to uh, do this um, song uh, in our honor of uh, all the ones who are sickly in the hospital, the ones who are um, having a difficult time. So I wanted to uh, share this song with you all. That song was, um, I, I composed this song when I was, um, actually my mother sang this to me years ago when I was uh, uh, laying in a hospital at the age of 11 years old. Uh, my grandmother sang this song to me. Um, she came in and she wanted me to get well. I was uh, ailing with, uh, I had an illness, pneumonia. And she uh, asked her, I said, I want to leave. I said, I want to go home. And my grandmother told me, she said that if, so I sing this song, he said, I would I would get out and immediately I caught the song and uh, remembered it. And as I sing this song, I, I want to remember the ones are who are, who are in the hospital and uh, you know send healing to them because uh, with about my grandmother's teachings and those words and those um, te you know those words that come from that song, I would have never got up. So yeah. that's a you know a beginning of faith. You know, you know, I always tell people that um, when people are are fearful, fearful of dying, then they need more faith. They need yeah. more. They need more of the uh, the uh, to open their mind and their heart and, and their soul because there you know there's no there you know not, we have not much time to be thinking about things. And right now we gotta just do it. You know. Yeah, I saw in the thread someone said, <laughs> "What tribe is he from?" That is inappropriate. What nation? Is he from? Yeah, like my family is the Chislaki, the Cherokee yeah, nation. Like I said, we're we the Kota nation. Yeah. So, on this um, Good Friday, yeah. go ahead. We have a delay. I was, I was just thinking about their connection. You know, the where everything has started and where we begin. And I think that um, after seventeen years, we finding. Um, 
you know, got it, you know, where, where are we supposed to be and who we are and where, where this is up, you know, it's supposed to begin. Um, I mean, it began a long time ago, but it just every day is a beginning, just like the sun yeah. that has so much faith and belief and people that they can uh, go through what they're going through today. And so um, I think about, you know, my grandmother, um, this word that always comes to mind, it, it was Tokata Igliam means that prepare for the future. Um, she always stressed that in, in our culture, in our way, because um, if we aren't prepared, so we're all gonna flourish, we're all gonna die. And that was part of our, our you know, teachings because every day our life, we said, there, there has to be more to this. Uh, my, my father used to say, not everything's black and white, it's black, red, yellow, and white. Yes. <laughs> and so I thought about that um, and I realized that you know, we are related, we're all related, and um, we're just, like I said, the only difference is that um, when we ask each other what tribe we are, then we're disconnected because um, we all come uh, from, you know, the, we're all from, uh, how do you say that, the same root but different tree, and yeah. so um, however we grow and how we, um, you know, grow with each other and how we look and feel, you know, that depends on, on self, and so today, I think about that. I think about my how my grandmother um, got me got me ready. You know, send send me ceremonies, and all these ceremonies were so important that I, at the age of ten or eleven, I was happy to take part in these ceremonies. And they allowed that at that time. At that time, no, no children were uh, present because us not to to them. They wanted us not to worry about the future. Yeah. But uh, I was happy that I was, you know, um, able to to take part in these ceremonies. And if I didn't, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here. You know, it's so funny to me as a native and as an African, because, you know, ceremony, ritual is so very important to us. But it seems like in the American culture, if you say ceremony, if you say ritual, um, they, they immediately classify it as something bad and wrong, but Americans do ceremony all the time. <laughs> they just don't call it that. And because yeah. I think there's a lack of respect for culture and tradition, they expect everybody to align with what it is that they say it is. And in the meantime, dismiss the beautiful ritual and ceremony that uh, the people of this land that we have and hold. Uh, and one of the ceremonies, and we call it a ceremony, yes, is death. Why, what are some of the native traditions and thoughts about death that the Westerners seem to ignore? <laughs> about, about what? Death, you know, death. death. Okay, I think, I think, yeah, I think that uh, I, I want my belief was that we didn't, like I said, we didn't have fear. And I think that um, one thing is my, my mother used to say that when she wanted me to sing for her. She wanted me to uh, say beautiful words to her, to say, I love you, and sing for her, to pray for her as, as, she, as, she, as her, she was breathing in and out of her body, her soul, her spirit. She said, don't, don't cry for me. He said, don't sing for me or don't honor me while I'm six foot under. Do it now. Right. And it was her way of teaching us that you know this is this is not a way of honoring death or you know it's just part of life as they say, and I think that tradition as they call it you know um, you know the rich the rich history the the what we went through what how we how we um, you know as as I always say then the buffaloes at one time were uh, annihilated, annihilated and they basically um, you know, kill, try to kill all of them just so that they can kill us because that was their resource. Yeah. And so now today my, you know, I keep thinking that we're still here, you know, and, and that the Buffalo Nation, the, the Buffalo Nation is still here. Yeah. And today is their time. I think about, you know, the, the as you call it, the, we, we call them the Buffalo, the Eagle Nation, the Deer Nation, Elk Nation, they're all, uh, you know, having it to their life because um, they notice that the human people, the human nation is is not around as, you know, they're all in their homes and 
they're you know having a party, you know, a lifetime party. That, I know, you know right? That is changing, you know. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure. So the, they think, the, you know, they wish we could do this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. the animals so are really happy that we're is, still. Um, you know, the, uh, how do you say that? Human, yeah, the human nation's giving the mother nature uh, a big hate. That's, that's where we are today. Um, it's really important that we acknowledge them because without them, you know, um, here the still here and the, and the buffalo, the deer, the elk, and the, the eagle nation. So um, to keep doing so, you know, everything is is all for a purpose and reason. There's no coincidence. Yeah, Warfield, you know the song you sing for Grandma for Umi, the one that I love so much. What's that? The song that you sing for grandmothers. Is it Umi? Yeah. Sing it for me. <laughs> it's Uchi. Uchi, yes, Uchi. Yeah. We say Uchi, you yeah, say Uchi. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think in this time, you know, this full oh, yeah, um, time, just kind of skipping your song. Yeah, I think your um your signal is going in and out. All right, well, we'll sing it later. I want you to sing that. You know, that's my song. I love that song. And if you, if you have yeah, questions, I'll sing that before I leave here. So I think we'll put that on the list. Okay. <laughs> and um, if you have questions for Warfield, put them in your thread. I think that we go back and uh, so even the medicines. Yeah, um, I think the medicines that we were using today um, is very vital to our people, and that's what we've been preparing uh, for days like this, times like this, because the medicine is you know part of it and uh it's interesting that i was talking to my mother this morning and she was telling me uh, i was asking her about and she said oh he said you know the native people the Lakota people he said we've been through this before he said we we, we, we do that with the smallpox and the blankets and you know what, what had happened and he said we're today he said we're basically we're survivors of destruction and yeah so we're we're now he said beginning to um you know now people are now just seeing this and now they, maybe they won't accept it because everything today uh you know the push of a button or a flip of a switch they want they want things to go back to normal but what what, what is normal and i think about grandmother and mother would talk about and i, I hold them dear dearly because now all the medicine men, all the medicine women, they're, you know, they're hard at work now, praying and, you know, using medicines to heal the, the people. And so I think that, um, we, you know, going back to that, uh, you know, we're all, um, you know, awakening. And one thing I told um, the people yesterday, I said, we're all on a vision quest. Yes. Um, we're, we're we're on a vision quest because we're seeing things that we never saw before but yeah we saw it before it's just that we didn't we didn't and so going on the vision quest today without you know our culture at the age of 12 i went on a hill without food and water you know to venture out to seek a vision not to receive or seek power but to to seek good health and life as uh, they always told us that you can't buy health uh, that's that's a wealth in, in your in your in your because having wealth, um, you know, it isn't about money. It's about, uh, you know, good health. So yeah. that, you know, one of the things that they were given to us at that time. You know, I, I don't know if people understand what a vision quest is. I know they read about it in some of the magazines. But uh, a vision quest is when you go um, what we call up on the hill for it could be three days, seven days. And to pray and to ask for a vision for your life, um, a purpose for your life. And um, it's, a, it's a very sacred process. And if, if you're not prepared, it's a very um, scary, it can be a scary process. So Warfield put me up on the hill in South Dakota. <laughs> you remember Warfield? It was five below zero. <laughs> yeah. Five below zero. 
<laughs> uh, I, I it was so beautiful because I just wondering how you survived that day. So I think you. It was the coyotes. Remember, I told you how all the coyotes, hundreds of coyotes, came and surrounded the lodge, and I wasn't supposed to look out, but I peeked out there and I saw them looking at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, five below zero. Yeah, it, yeah, I think that was. Uh, I, Yeah, I felt like that that was your day and you know, that was your time to yes. Uh, Do you home realize that into, that was to the place where everything began? That was 18 years ago, Warfield. Can you imagine? It was 18 years ago. Yeah. That we did years that. Ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Warfield, why? Uh, That's I what I like about this, this, you know, this connection. <laughs> it's it's going in and out. But okay, two, what is it? Two things I want to say because you were talking earlier about medicines, and you know, I know for my grandmother, and I'm sure for your grandmother, we weren't. They didn't run to the doctor for every little thing. They had a relationship with the botanicals, with the herbs, with the earth. Yeah. And so talk to me a little bit about the botanicals that you you have. And I know one is ex uh, particularly powerful because a lot of people are allergic to smoke, so they don't want to burn sage or burn incense. But you have botanicals that people can use, right? right yes. So one of the reasons why we, we keep going back and talking about the medicines is that uh, in, you know, today's world is a lot different, especially living in a city. Uh, we, we pay a big price to live in cities or people who live in different areas and that they can't, some of them are asthmatic, can't drink, uh, or you can't um, burn sage. So what happens, you know, now today the medicines, that, especially the ones that we use, um, sage is one of them. Um, it has so much uh, thing that goes inside that medicine and i remember my grandparents um, that was their medicine their choice of medicine they would pray with it and they would use it to you know get healing from it and so when i think about you know what th this was all um, about their way of having a connection with that root or that plant or that leaf and so i now today i think about um you know the each time they would use their medicine they would pray with it um there was no and I always remember that there was never a time or place where they never made a, a joke about it. Like today, uh, you know, takes the sage and, uh, you know, thinking that it's, you know, it's to get bad spirits away or to uh, remove any negative feelings. Or thoughts. Um, but for us, it was medicine to heal spiritually and physically uh, to utilize that. And my grandfather used to talk to that medicine, talk to that medicine and ask permission for if this medicine can heal us. And so this that was really important. Um, that was, I was grateful to, to be part of that, um, this connection that, they, that we're, uh, we have with the medicine. We also have, um, now today we realize that there's medicines that uh, we have that are not growing at, this, in, at the same place. They're growing in different areas, different places. Abundant would grow. At one time, there was ab abundance of medicines, and of course, the first medicine is water. Uh, there, there isn't, you know, even though people say there, there isn't that much water uh, to drink, I think that there is a lot of water, but is it, is it the quality of water? Because the water is, you know, getting poisoned. So I think that today uh, we have to always medicine, do a certain way of um, this medicine and honoring that medicine, talk to that medicine for healing. And today, the young generation, um, you know, use pills. They they go to the doctors and they and they you know get pills and they want to you know pain or any thirty uh, pills for pain or anything. But they also, they get pills you know for their health health elements and you know. So what happens is that um, the connection that they have with that is they want instant uh, healing. They want instant relief. But with sage or bear root or osha, all these medicines. Uh, we use those medicines, and it takes time because it gets to has to get to know your body, it has to get to know your mind, your spirit. You know, have you know, you know, it has trust for you, and then you you your 
you have to have trust in that root or that medicine that's going to go inside of you. So that's the way I see it. That's the way I look at it. It's very important that you have to have a relationship with these plants and these medicines. And so that's that's the way I, I see it, and I'm really happy. Okay, now I'm trying to get him up. Unmute. Can you hear me, Warfield? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Okay. I have no idea what happened. We just went down, but that's okay. Uh, you know, those who have patience waited and they're here and those who didn't are gone. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I wanted to um, know, what I had asked you was, what would grandma and what would Papa Moose say to the people about how to get through this time? What would they say to us? Okay, now I think you're frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think one of the things that we're always at, uh, is, yeah, turn this off. I think that's what's. It's just bad connection. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. But you're going in and out. Go ahead. Just talk. Uh, my my grandmother would always say they would tell one, one of their virtues where they said they would tell us not to pray for patience or else you'll be tested daily. Yeah. <laughs> my grandmother, and that was one of the things that my grandmother would always pr profess, you know. Um, today we're very impatient. Yes. So today going on today and so today we're, our, our life is not has, hasn't changed and, and maybe it just like I said, um, we, but sometimes, like I said, we grieve and we don't want to be, you know, uh, we are of the many losses and saddened by that. But also, uh, my mother and my grandmother always stressed to me not to be professional mourners, you know, not not to to cry, you know, not to uh, be angry to the Creator for our purpose in life. So that was our, our purpose in life. You know, we we had to. Uh, be strong and, and knowing that if we didn't have to cry for them every day. You know, we know that there's a better place. You know that, and that's I, I have a lot of faith and belief in the Creator. I don't need to see Him. I I, 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 need, I need to see Him. I, I need to. Uh, for me, I, I want to hear uh, this being that's or her, you know, this this being that's within within all of us that uh, you know get through this. And my, and my grandmother would talk about to to gain through this uh, through experience. Yeah. Well, this is virus of destruction. You know, well, this is. This is part of it, and we got to honor that tradition. Are those words and tradition? Yes. So this is what, this is what I want to do, Warfield, because I guess more and more people are coming on the internet, so our signal is getting weak. So I'm going to put the link to your website, and I want everybody to know that this is War Warfield's debut on Facebook. <laughs> His first time out. So I'm glad you did it with us. And, and um, I hope you do many, many more. I, I, I yeah. really hope that we can get a connection where you can do some of the powerful sure. teachings that you've taught me. And yeah. Warfield gave me my name in the Lakota Nation. I have my name in the Jaslaki Nation, but he gave me my name in the Lakota Nation. You remember my name, Warfield? I caught the name. What? The yeah, like your name is, is Ho Ekyapi, means uh, the people. The people recognize her voice. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your website on my, on my. Yeah, to, to the most actually using that name to, to and at the highest. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put your website on my, in my links and I'll put the information there about the botanicals. And I'll put the information there. Are you doing? Are you going to do the Sundance this year? 
Um, it's just by day by day. I think yeah. that we're just praying about it, and uh, it's not you know in the in the, in the future. Yeah, let's yeah, hundred years, another thousand. We're gonna be here for thousands of years. <laughs> is gonna be happening. You know. Okay. All right. So, why don't you sing us out, Orpheum? And I'll tell everybody. I'll put the things in the link, and we're gonna try to yeah. clean it up a little bit so that um, you know you can hear him better. I may even put captions in the bottom so that you can see it, but I want everybody to be able to hear you. So why don't you sing us out, Warfield? It's okay to, uh, you know, to Yala and to nation, we, um, the women, the women nation, we need you. Uh, we want you to support us and help us through this uh, just me too. And so, uh, just want to share that song with you. This song with you today. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> So again, I can say thank you to you, sister, and oh, for Warfield, time, thank you so much. Thank you so Again. much. Again, thank you. Okay. Oh, and tell Shiloh and everybody I said hey. <laughs> so um, I don't know how much of that you were able to hear. Um, I don't know how much of that you were able to see. We will try to put it all together so that we have a composite picture. Uh, just wanted to share with you the other side of me, okay? Uh, it's incredible. You know, people think they know everything about you. Um, and as I shared, Warfield is a Lakota or a medicine man from Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. So I guess out there, it's, you know, where the signal is. Uh, but I'm just glad that he was able to be with us. You can get his music on his website, Mita Oising. We're going to put that in the link for you and you can get the botanicals that he talked about. His, um, his assistant support, his brother, Shiloh Clifford, makes a spray sage that is off the hook, okay? I don't even make it because I get mine from them. But I'm glad that he talked about the importance of talking to the herbs, okay? Because that's exactly what we do with our masterpiece products. We talk to the herbs and we share with, tell them what it is we need them to do before we put them in the product. So uh, let us remember it's not just Holy Thursday and Good Friday and Passover and Easter, but there are traditions of the people whose land we occupy, okay? We are in somebody else's house and we seem to have forgotten that and forgotten about the culture of the people and the language of the people. And I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully one day we can get a better connection 
Uh, but if you've ever been to the reservation, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of land. Uh, but actually, I think he's in California. So I, I don't know why we couldn't hold a connection, but that's okay. And plus, that camera together made me look old and scrunched. <laughs> so what do I have for the children today? I have a movie for them. And particularly for children of color, Latin American, African American, who own, know absolutely nothing about Native American history or culture because we were called Indians and shown half naked with feathers. Uh, so I really would ask you to let the children watch The Indian in a Cupboard, which is a movie that teaches young people about uh, Native American culture. It's not the best, but uh, Little Bear, who's the character in the movie, really does share, drop some nuggets, okay, with the young boy who's there. So that's a good thing. Um, it's on Netflix, it's on Hulu, it's on Apple TV. So if you have a subscription, you can see it there and watch it with the children and um, talk to them about what they've seen, because I just think it's so important that we blend these lines and that we come together. Um, and for the big people, I'm going to post all of Warfield's links and stuff so that you can go and, and to his site, because I know the connection, it might've been a little difficult to hear him, but go listen to his music, purchase his album, donate to his organization, because he really is staying true to the culture of his people and his nation. Um, and if you're interested in purifying your home or your body, look at some of his botanicals. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So, of course, I have some books that I'm going to give away today. I do have some books. But today, I'm not going to give three books to one person. I'm going to give one book to three different people, okay? <laughs> All right. I have a classic here. I have a classic. The value in the valley. The value in the valley. Okay. So if you don't have it and you'd like to have it, the value in the valley, or if you want it and you haven't put your name in the line and we will get it to you. If you are blessed with a book, You've got to call, um, send me an email to iamladiamla.com and then we'll get all your information so that we could send it to you. And the books that I have today are signed. So The Value in the Valley, this was published, this is old. So when you get it, know that it's new, but it's old. It was published in 1995. So all you people that think that I popped up on Oprah. and <laughs> All right, let me see. Blessings my way, Rita Casey, R-E-T-A Casey, Rita Casey. This is your copy of The Value in the Valley, and it is signed for you. All right. Let me see. I've got another one here. All right. All right. All right. I've got an Until Today. This is the paperback edition. This is Mama Amasi. You don't know Mama Amasi, but this is her Bible. All right. Until Today, a message for every day, 12 principles for the year. Um, I found, I'm telling you, there makes no rhyme or reason. I, I had them in the box, so I'm going to give it to you. I would love a book, please. Uh, that's Naima Salam. Naima Salam. Naima Salam. Send me an email to iyamla at iyamla.com and put book blessing in there, and then we'll get your information. Now, okay, this one, this is unbelievable. I didn't even know I had this. This is no longer available in the world. Okay. It's called living through the meantime. When I wrote in the meantime, I did a workbook. So this is a workbook. This is a workbook that will help you get through the meantime. If you've read in the meantime, then this is the workbook that goes with that. Unbelievable sitting in a box. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. I'm going to count to three. And the first person I see now, I'm going to give you the workbook. If you don't have it in the meantime, you got to go get that yourself. Okay. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. And 
oh goodness, the thing is moving so fast. Melissa Price, Melissa Price, you just got a copy of In the Meantime, the workbook for In the Meantime, Living Through the Meantime. This is Living Through the Meantime, okay? So if you got a blessing today, send me an email to iyamla at iyamla.com and put in the the line book blessing, and then we'll get your information and I'll send them to you. Now I'm going to show you something, but I'm not going to do this today. This is a whole bag of t-shirts. <laughs> do you see that? That I found, all right, that I'm going to give away tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow will be our day. So that's what we have for the day. Uh, I want to take us out with a reading. Don't forget and please, it don't take forever to send us the thing because we try to get them to the um, to the post office. And please do. I thank you for sharing this these videos. I see how you do it. I see the little thing that says share, but I don't know what that means. Okay. So anyway, I thank you for sharing the video and for the new people who are joining us from um, YouTube and Instagram because they always say, when is she live? When is she live? 10 o'clock every morning. All right. I'm on a different platform today. That's why I look so different. I see my face looks hanging. <laughs> hey, it's a face. I'm glad I got one. Okay. For our closing today, I am reading from An American Sunrise, poems by Joy Harjo. Joy Hardro, okay, who is currently, currently the first Native American poet laureate, laureate of the United States. Joy is a member of the Muscogee Nation, and she, that is the nation of people who were forcibly removed from their land, right, right east of the Mississippi River, and taken to what was called Indian Territory, which is now Oklahoma. Okay. <laughs> and this poem is from her book, An American Sunrise, and it is called Honoring. And this is what Joy has written. Who sings to the plants that are grown for our plates in aprons or arms? Or do they suffer the fate of a motor-driven whip of a monster reaper? No song at all, only the sound of money being stacked in a bank. Who stitched the seams in my clothes, one line after another? Was the room sweaty and dark with no hour to spare? Did she have a home anywhere or did she live on the floor? Or was the seamstress a child with no home of his or her own? Who sacrifices to make clothes for strangers of another country and why? Let's remember to thank the grower of the food, the picker, the driver, the sun and the rain. Let's remember to thank each maker of the stitch, a layer of pattern, a dryer of color in the immense house of beauty and pain. Let's honor the maker. Let's honor what is made. And so that's our message for today. Deep bow to you, deep bow, and I will see you tomorrow. They don't like me. <laughs>